Hello, I'm Joe from Cheap Joe's Art Stuff. And today I'd like to show you our watercolor gesso. I'm so excited about it. I use it all the time and it's really fun. You can gesso on almost anything that you can imagine and still paint over it with watercolor. Or you could do acrylic if you wanted to or even oil, but it's designed to let you create a surface where you can use watercolor where you otherwise couldn't use watercolor. I did this apron and I wore it just to show you. It's been used a lot and it's kind of dirty, but it gives you the idea. And this is a little winter scene that I painted on it with watercolor. And then I simply spray it with a fixative and it's, I've had it for several years. And here's the process. It's very easy. I take an apron just like this one. I've laid it out flat here. And as you can see, I've already used this apron because it has some paint on it. So I've put one strip of artist tape. This is one inch artist tape. And it wouldn't really matter what tape you use. I just have a lot of this in my studio. So I'm using this. You could use a 3M tape or any tape that won't let it kind of leak underneath. And I've already made a couple more strips of the tape and I'm going to come down like this and put it on and press it down good with your fingers like that so it does seal it. And we'll block it off kind of square right there. And the same way over here, just like that. Takes you a minute to block it off. And you can do this again on, on anything you wanted to do it on a board, a rock, a glass item or whatever. Then you take the American Journey watercolor gesso right here and I take a big, this is a one and a half inch golden fleece brush that I've used in everything for a long time and I love it and I wet it and I simply come over here with the gesso and I gesso right over the tape and put a nice big layer. Now I can do one layer, if I want to, thick enough, believe it or not, that it will work just fine. You will see a little bit of grayish coming through, but it's very little. So you can put it on thick, or you can give it a couple of coats. It doesn't matter which one you, you really do. Either one works fine. I prefer to do one coat because I am so impatient and lazy so so there I have it all painted white put the brush in there and clean it off and clean my little hands off here a little bit and when that dries and it won't take but a few minutes for it to dry we will show you about putting some watercolor on it how easy it is now the um, gesso has dried I actually while it was drying, I added a little more gesso after it dried. I added a little more to it because the apron was sh showing through pretty, pretty much. So I've added a little more gesso to it. Now it's dry. So now I'm going to take off the tape that gave me that nice wh white area to paint on, just like watercolor that we're going to do. There it is. And now, so that I will have a mat around it, just like this, I take more tape and I tape just to the edge of the white here just like that this is the same kind of tape this is the artist one inch artist tape and then I'm going to be ready to paint with watercolor now on that little area I can even take a pencil and draw on it this is a 4B pencil 8B would work better but I can actually draw on it uh, whatever I would want to put in here. And in this case, I put that little, little building in there. And this little ridge came off like that. I have this big tree that comes up here like this with all the limbs and the different things. And I just kind of move it. And then back here, I have a nice grove of evergreen trees just like that. And um, the little house, we'll, we'll wing the rest of it. So I want to show you how easy this is now to paint on this canvas, black canvas apron that we put the watercolor gesso on. And so now I'm going to pick up some of these colors that I've got in here. I'm not sure what all I'm getting, but I'm getting some darker colors in here and just going to start putting it on 
Look at that. It just goes right on there. We pick up some of this green that we'll add some ultramarine to. And a little bit of burnt sienna in it. Dark color because it tends to, this is a snow scene, so it's going to be darker. And this bluish color now can actually be the sky that's back there. That'll work. I'm going to add a little bluer in here, a little darker. So I'm taking a little more pigment in my watercolor than I would maybe on paper because the gesso is no doubt absorbing some of it, as you can tell. But this is going to be a very quick little demo. And I'm going to do negative painting around this tree. Maybe I'll leave another limb or two negative painting in there for it. Pick up a little more of this burnt sienna and a little more ultramarine. That's two of the earthy colors that John Pike and Ted Kautsky and all those guys, ultramarine blue and burnt sienna and yellow ochre was, was a triad that they just did a lot of painting with and uh, worked for them. It's an old timey color. We have so many new colors today, especially the quinacridones and, and that sort of thing that's just so, so much fun. And uh, I love the new colors, and I also love painting with the old colors. I'm just adding a little more strength back in here. And now I'm going to make this little building. It's going to be a nice, rich red, which is Joe's red with some palette dark put in it. And I'm going to come in here like that with it. We're going to give it a light direction. And the light's going to be coming this way, so that means this side is darker, much darker red. So I'll add a little darker color. Again, just the ultramarine. And we'll put a little shadow on that side. We'll put a little chimney right there with a little shadow. And then we'll put some little smoke coming up out of the chimney right up through there. And we'll add a little shadow, a little blue shadow from something over in here. Because, no, here. The light's coming here. So I'll add a little shadow on this tree right here. We'll imagine that shadow is going that way on it. Here's a limb and here's a limb. Over here, some more shadow coming in there. Right here, we've got some shadow coming down. And along here, perhaps a little bit. I don't know what's causing it. Some, some of the hillsides giving a little shadow in there. And that's going to be all I do for, for right now. I might come back later and add a little more detail to it, a little darker stuff in there. Maybe even with uh, a rigger and add a few darker limbs to this area right here using ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. And, and I'll come right in here. Wow. Boy, those are strong. And we'll put another little, let's put another tree, let's put a little fence along here. That's pretty neat right there. All this is on canvas, remember, a little window. Got to have a little window to get in there. Maybe a little door down here where the person who lived there, woodcutter. This is one of the one of the woodcutters who lives up in Alaska we see on those reality shows. Or maybe it's me. Maybe it's my home up here somewhere. Now then, I'll take the tape off. And I see it seeped through just a little here and there, but not very much. And there we have the little painting on the apron with a little mat around it. And if we want to fill in a little more just to define it, we can simply come in here like this, bring it on across, and I don't know what this is, doesn't matter, but now we have a little snow scene on our apron. And now then simply take a spray fixative if you want to and spray it after this is dry, take 20 or 30 minutes. Give it a coat or two of the spray fixative and here's what you've got for a long, long time. It's fun. Happy art.